My name is Ingrid Rohde, and I'm a clinical professor of OBGYN at UCLA. Today I'd like to talk to you about some aspects of evaluation and treatment of infertility, and uh, give you some details about procedures that we perform. One of the aspects uh, I would like to discuss to start with is the impact of being overweight and obese on reproduction. Clearly there are overweight and obese women who get pregnant, but we've, what we've observed is that women who are a normal weight do better than women who are either overweight or obese. So what we mean by a normal BMI, a body mass index, is a range between 20 and 25. Women between 25 and 30 are overweight, and those over 30 are obese. This graph doesn't show that, but women who are under a BMI of 20 also may have an increased uh, risk of infertility. So that we're really aiming to get the range between 20 and 25. What we see on this graph is the age of the woman at the bottom, 30, between 30 and 34, 35 and 39, and greater than 40, and the live birth rate. The yellow are women uh, with a BMI greater than 25, so either overweight or obese, and the orange are the women with a BMI of uh, less than 25. Third party reproduction is the next topic I'd like to talk to you about. That includes egg donation, sperm donation, and gestational surrogacy. Women who for one reason or another can't use their own eggs can use uh, eggs or oocytes uh, from healthy donors that are fertilized and transferred into the uterus so she can carry the pregnancy. These can either be fresh uh, or frozen and they can come either from a known or an anonymous donor. More recently there's been the creation of egg banks where eggs are frozen similarly to the way sperm is frozen and then sold from the egg bank. Gestational surrogacy is when a woman carries a pregnancy that has been conceived uh, from the eggs and sperm of the intended parents. Now sometimes the eggs and or the sperm are not from the intended parents but the important issue here is that they are not from the just the eggs do not come from the gestational surrogate. In those rare cases where the egg does come from the gestational surrogate, that is a classical surrogacy arrangement and is very rare today. Because it is better, uh, we have found that there be no genetic connection between the baby and the surrogate carrying the pregnancy. This graph shows us the success rate uh, in terms of percent uh, over a woman's um, reproductive lifespan of using donated eggs from a uh, young donor or using her, egg, uh, her own eggs. In, in this particular graph, the little blue squares are from the egg donor and the green circles are from the woman herself. And we can see a significant drop in the pregnancy rates when, as the woman approaches 40 and beyond. At UCLA, we aim to maximize the outcomes for both the mother and the baby. What that um, involves is optimizing the maternal health prior to pregnancy. We ask women to come in when they're considering pregnancy to discuss their history, their physical exam, their lab work, and make sure that they are in the best possible shape to go ahead and become pregnant. We also focus on uh, low IVF cancellation rates 
and we maximize the use of elective single embryo transfer. What we mean by that is transferring only one embryo at a time to reduce the chance of multiple pregnancy rate. Some couples like the idea of having a, twins. Almost nobody likes the idea of having triplets. But even twins are more dangerous uh, for the mother and for the babies. So we spend a lot of time going over the risks of multiple pregnancy rate if the couples are interested in having twins. Another topic is fertility preservation. And that comes under either freezing of eggs or freezing of embryos. The use of vitrification as a technique has inc uh, increased the uh, success rate of freezing eggs and, and embryos uh, so that this has become a much more common uh, recommendation. The indications include social indications. That's in the case where a woman um, would like or has to delay childbearing for a social reasons such as education, starting a job or career, or finding a partner. Medical reasons such as cancer treatment are an important um, reason we do fertility preservation. We work closely with our oncology, our oncology colleagues uh, to make sure that we raise awareness of this possibility. It is very reassuring to women and men who have to go through cancer treatment that their fertility can be preserved. Thirdly, there are genetic reasons that put uh, women at higher risk for getting cancer early in life. And, for, and in that situation, we recommend uh, freezing eggs or embryos for use later in life. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to collect more eggs than we would be able to in the time interval between the diagnosis of cancer and the onset of the treatment. Especially because some of these conditions require many more eggs than for somebody who doesn't have the condition because so many of the embryos will be affected. Finally, the methodology of oocyte cryopreservation is no longer considered experimental, making it available for us to recommend to patients. Success rates are always a, a, a question that uh, patients have for us, and they are very closely tied to the age of the mother or the age of the woman at the time that we take the eggs. So that uh, we recommend that when possible, a woman freeze her eggs before the age of 32. The egg survival rate uh, from the thaw is very good at 90 to 97%. Clinical pregnancy rates per thawed oocyte are somewhere between 4 and 12 percent. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when we do the egg retrieval, we usually retrieve somewhere between 10 and 15 eggs, giving us multiple opportunities for an embryo to be successful. As egg freezing is relatively new, more information is needed on the successful pregnancy and live birth rates. But I do find that patients feel very reassured that they are contributing to the possibility of having a child later in life if they're not able to do that at the moment that they're, they come to see us. Of course, it doesn't guarantee future pregnancy, but it is uh, a step in, in that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you.